I've been engaging in some banter uh, about how much punishment a, a cop should get if he breaks the law. And of course, I've heard plenty of the, well, we should hold them to a higher standard. And I understand the reasoning behind it. However, I'm going to reject that. I'm going to argue that they should get the same sentences as anybody else. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Now this will cause a lot of commentary, I just know it, but here is how it goes. So let's examine the arguments that uh, cops, if they break the law, they should get a harsher sentence. And of course, one of them is that, well, they're trained, okay? So for example, if a cop loses his cool and uh, let's say punches a guy who probably didn't deserve it, uh, we say, well, he's trained in de-escalation and therefore he has a higher responsibility to ensure that he keeps his emotions in check. And, and I understand that argument. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that argument. The other one is what I would call the embezzlement argument. And if you think about uh, theft and embezzlement, what's the difference? Well, embezzlement is theft when you are stealing that which you have been entrusted. So in other words, uh, it's one thing to go into a store and steal from the store owner. It's quite another to raid the till. When you're raiding the till, you're taking money that was entrusted to you. And at that point, it becomes embezzlement and we have harsher penalties for that. So in this case here, we can say that officers uh, operate under a public trust. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose that I go out to uh, Jason Klopfer's uh, trailer, right? Okay, we'll use him as an example because we've been talking about him quite a bit. Uh, he's inside his trailer with his wife. It's late at night and I'm pretty pissed off at him. All right. And so I'm going to call him out and I drive up and I yell at him, come on out, Jason. Jason will walk up to the door and realize um, this is not a cop. I am not going to go outside whatsoever. Screw him. I'm going to go back to sleep. Okay. However, if it's a police officer, uh, Jason sees that there's an officer out there. There's a certain amount of trust in that opening the door. He's not going to be shot. The very fact that you're a police officer means that the public has placed trust in you not to break the law, unlike that if you were just an ordinary citizen. So at this point, it really looks like cops should be dealt far more harshly than ordinary citizens when they break the law. They are trained better and they have violated public trust. However, now I'm going to propose a couple of reasons why they shouldn't be, and in fact, they should receive a lighter sentence, okay? So one of them is that, although they may have broken the law, they are placed in situations where they have far greater opportunity to break the law. So for example, going back to our earlier argument about the person getting into a fight, okay, yes, I mean, if I'm in a hostile situation and I unjustifiably hit somebody, then I have committed assault. However, how often does that happen? With me, rarely. I don't get into fights and stuff like that, so I tend to avoid these situations. A police officer, however, gets into these things all the time, so the chances that a police officer are, is going to make a mistake and hurt somebody unjustifiably is far, far greater than the ordinary citizen. And then there's another argument, and that is that if I get into a situation like, let's say, a fight, I can walk away from it. Uh, going back to Jason Koppler in his uh, situation where he got shot, if I have a gun and I'm pissed off at Jason, I don't have to be there. I can walk away. A police officer doesn't have that kind of flexibility, that kind of freedom. When they call him to the scene of a crime, he has to go. And I realize a lot of people are going to be saying, well, there's no duty, whatever. It doesn't matter. We all know that he's paid to do this kind of work. He pretty much has to do it. Otherwise, he's risking his job. And the notion that he can play that 
I don't have to respond card doesn't hold very well. If he doesn't respond, he's not only risking his job, but also public ire, as we saw in the Uvalde shootings. So, in a sense, we force police officers to be in these situations where they can make a mistake. In other words, we place them in positions to fail. And it takes exceptional training and, uh, let's say, emotional restraint for them not to get into these situations. So, on one hand, we have two good reasons why police officers should be held to a higher standard and punished more severely, we have two good reasons why they should be actually punished lighter. My solution, I have an idea, and this is going to be wild and crazy, and I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people who don't like it. My solution is, let's just treat them the same as everybody else. And actually, this correlates really well with our whole notion of in society that we are all equal under the law. If I break the law, and if you break the law, we should be treated the same, um, considering the fact that we don't have prior arrests and things, like, and things like that. That comes into play, but why should one group of people be singled out for harsher punishment than the other? It doesn't make any sense to me. Therefore, I suggest whatever penalties are imposed for the average citizen, should be the same for police officers. One thing I also might add, you know, it's easy for us to advocate harsher punishments for other people. Keeping in mind, if we're advocating for a harsher punishment for LEOs, then we're sort of advocating for lighter punishment for ourselves. So you may respond, well, even cops want it. Well, uh, retired cops are fine with it, right? Harsher punishments because they've served their time. They're no longer in jeopardy of facing this. Current cops, well, they think that this won't happen to them. Well, they're dead wrong if they think that this can't happen to them. There's plenty of opportunities for a cop not to do anything wrong and still get nailed. So all you police officers out there, you're advocating for harsher punishments, you be careful. You might be on the wrong end of that one someday. Like my video, subscribe to my channel, and uh, let me have it.